In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Tonight, you and I pause. Pause from what we've been doing and what's going on out in the world outside of these walls. It'll still be there after we're done, but we take a break from that tonight and let all of that go. We take time out of our busy lives to call to mind and to pray for those who meant so much to us in this world, who have departed this world, and who through the love of Jesus Christ are still bound to us in his mystical body. Remember, he is the head, we are the body. St. Paul says not even death can separate us from the love of Christ. And so they are still with us. You'll hear a wonderful phrase in this liturgy that life is changed, not ended. So how beautiful it is. If you think about it, it is love that has brought us together. Your love for your departed and God's undying love for them and you. First, we recognize that we do mourn. Sometimes our world today wants us to just get it over with and move on. But that's wrong. It's okay to mourn. We are sorry to be without the person we remember and pray for, those people we remember especially tonight. Maybe it's been a very difficult few weeks, months, for some of you maybe years. Even if we're glad our loved ones aren't suffering, if they were suffering from sickness, we recognize they still held a place in our hearts that no one else can occupy, something only God can fill. So it is okay to miss them. It is okay to mourn that little piece that's not there. Jesus gave us the permission when he wept at the death of his friend Lazarus, at the grave of Lazarus. The shortest verse in all the scriptures. He wept. Thinking about the death of our loved one would be morbid and pessimistic, except for one thing. Christ's resurrection. Jesus's, with Jesus with his world-changing resurrection has forever conquered the frightening reality of death. And so long as we are united to him, we need not fear it. Besides, it is one of the few things we can count on in life, right? <laughs> so it's better to think about it sometimes. Jesus himself talked about it a lot, shedding light on the awe-inspiring mysteries surrounding our departure from this world. The world before Christ's resurrection was unsure. The pagans, they go all over the place with different things. They weren't quite sure who would make it if it was anything at all. Even the Jews were not completely sure what would happen as we die. And so God was sending them the prophets. But even then, it, it wouldn't make sense until resurrection. But this is why this passage from the Book of Wisdom, that very first reading that we had, was so comforting. Imagine how comforting it was to the people who first heard it. Because they were on the other side of the resurrection. They did not know yet exactly what God had planned for us. But here, about 50 years before Christ came, they finally hear these words, the souls of the just are in the hand of God, and no torment shall touch, touch them, that they seemed in the view of the foolish to be dead. And their passing was thought an affliction, but they are in peace. You and I live on the other side of the resurrection. We have no excuse to be afraid if we believe. It's not just a Christian thing to believe in. The resurrection of Jesus Christ is an historical event, 
a fact. He is risen and the world has to deal with it. The question that Jesus asks Martha in the gospel, he's asking you and me every day. Do you believe this? Do you believe this? We and our beloved dead are given to Jesus in baptism. And Jesus, raised in glory, does not wish to lose even one of us. So we can rejoice with all those we have loved and have passed through the doors of death. Jesus still having a hold of them means that we can pray for them until they grow fully into Jesus' embrace, purified of every final attachment they had to the things of this world, and share his resurrection in its fullness. And our beloved faithful departed ones can in turn help us with their prayers. Did you know that? They can pray for us. We are, after all, one family. And they are alive in Christ. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all, in the words of St. Paul. We can pray for each other, so they can pray for us. Let us tonight renew our commitment to live our lives faithfully in accordance with God's will in all we say and do. We want to join our beloved all the days of our life that we have remaining to recommit to believe. Yes, Lord, I do believe in the words of Martha. May the Lord have mercy on all of these holy souls of our faithful departed loved ones and grant them eternal rest. Welcome them all into your kingdom, O Lord. Amen. At this moment, we will read the name